kwaini ni nyu ndodo na takara ekibita ndidada siki kabandibi Con el permiso y la autorización de nuestros 40 espíritus cuidadores, te rendimos, Madre Tierra y Padre Sol, esta ofrenda. Desde tiempo inmemorial, nuestros ancestros nos dejaron esta herencia de hacer un tributo a ti, Madre Tierra y Padre Sol, para que de ella emanen nuestro alimento. Zana kubita didani tu shishita yoya nyujian kidaya esa wa esa bi yoya tasha esa kando tasha e inchikanchi itu zakibita Espíritus cuidadores del Camino del Norte, armonícense con nosotros. Nuestros ancestros nos dejaron como herencia que nosotros podemos compartir contigo, Madre Tierra y Padre Sol, esa bebida sagrada para que compartamos con nosotros tu cosmovisión, tu manera de crear el universo para nosotros. Kushi kushi tando dando diko ya sasa kida ndo ekibita mea dando ya eni andi tu esa kando esa kondo tasha bishi nyu ndodo tasha bishi kutata ndo njika nchi sajuku ndo ekibita nataka ndo didha ndo kia nindo kutata ndo didha kwa ndo Na kutata ndo Baku kishando nyundu, duna nyu sabiku sini kwenda nuka chindu saa, nyabichi, shikintia, dasakano yo kika kura, una isu chinyanya. Nyu, na nyu sabi, uni, shini nyu ndikuna. Iyo na ndiku chiba, iyo na ndiku chitindu ba, iyo na ndiku itianjeo. 
ta kwa kwenda kundu tandu kita kondu kita kanda ka inga nya kundu su inu be e kundu inu nyu kundu ta kunda ndio shana nyuyo shana shiyo shana shina na ka kuna ka nya ka kuitunka iyo shana nyu sabi na shinte yu koyo shina tanda kwando to stavini dana museo britaniko ta da kanu ichi nya na kubika chinyo shina kuntani ke shamio shana nyuyo shana nyu sabi ta sake kubi sana yo nuna kwachi na seyo na bashika chisa ta kunte ena nisha kunte ena mina nya vaku inya da kona shiyo nuyo kibichi Bienvenidos a la Gran Nación de los New Sabi y a este magno evento que se llevará a cabo en el Museo Británico el día de hoy y mañana, 21 y 22 de junio del 2021, para enmarcar el nacimiento del señor Ocho Venado Garra de Jaguar. La Gran Nación New Sabi está conformada por un extenso territorio dividido en tres estados, Guerrero, Oaxaca y Puebla en la cual sus habitantes son nasabi y practican las diferentes festividades a la lluvia, así como a otros seres de la naturaleza. En la nación Yusabi encontramos la Mixteca Alta, la Mixteca Baja y la Mixteca de la Costa. Sabemos que la historia de los Yusabi fue escrita en nuestros libros sagrados sobre piel de venado, conocidos como códices mixtecos prehispánicos los cuales se localizan en diferentes partes del mundo. Por ejemplo, el Códice Tonindeye actualmente está en resguardo en el Museo Británico de Londres. Dicho códice es consider considerado histórico, genealógico y narrativo sobre los señoríos mixtecos y al reverso nos cuenta la biografía del señor Ocho Venado, Garra de Jaguar, gran guerrero, estadista, político y prominente gobernante Nyun Sabi. Estamos conscientes que la historia de nuestro pasado nos tiene que enseñar sobre la importancia de poseer una de las culturas más sorprendentes del México antiguo. Agradecemos al Museo Británico y esperamos que nos siga apoyando con nuevas actividades y proyectos que nos permitan continuar conociendo, aprendiendo y enalteciendo la cultura de los pueblos originarios. Todos, hermanos y hermanas, disfruten este gran evento. Thank you all for attending this important online event at the British Museum, marking the quincentenary of the fall of the Aztec capital, Tenochtitlan, to Spanish conquerors. And thanks to all of you from around the world who have come together to create this project with us. Tonight's event is the first in a week-long program that is the culmination of work undertaken by a collective of predominantly indigenous and indigenous language-speaking archaeologists and heritage specialists from Mesoamerica. This work has been done in collaboration with the Santo Domingo Center of Excellence 
for Latin American research. Over the past year, this group has been researching items in the museum's Mexican collection that contain pre-Hispanic forms of writing. They have focused in particular on the Tunendai or Tsushnatal and Shupawali of Tenochtitlan or Uban codices, as well as the Yakchilan lintels, uh, which are just behind me. This is an exciting and trailblazing project for many reasons, especially because it very much looks towards Latin America. The majority of the presentations will be given in Spanish with live translations to English, but importantly, a number of indigenous languages from Mexico and Guatemala will also be represented. We will hear contributions in Mixtec, Nianyu, Cachique, Quiche, and Yucatec Mayan, as well as Nahuatl. This will be the first fully bilingual event at the museum to incorporate indigenous languages. The project emphasizes the importance of including descendant peoples in the study and representation of the heritage. But further to this, the contemporary knowledge embedded in these languages has been key in deciphering Mesoamerican writings in the British Museum's collection. Throughout this week, you witness multiple perspectives from over 60 speakers, intellectuals, researchers, artists, and performers from across Mexico and Guatemala. Their inclusion is a testament to our core project collaborators who believe strongly that indigenous and non-indigenous peoples in the region should participate in the cultural knowledge shared on this museum's platform. This event privileges the voices behind the cultural narratives represented in the museum's collection, allowing these peoples to speak for themselves and providing us with a wonderful opportunity to commemorate 500 years of indigenous cultural resilience. Hello, my name is Laura osorio Senex, and I'm curator for the Santo Domingo Center of Excellence for Latin American Research. Hi, my name is Maria de las Mercedes Martinez Milanti, and I'm also curator here at the center. So you've just seen Hartwig speaking from the wonderful Mexico Gallery, uh, which is incredibly evocative. We're here in our office, which may seem slightly more dull, but we thought it was important to shoot from here to show you where we've been working for the last year. So I'd like to echo what Hartwig said in his welcome, which is that uh, we're, this event series is based on a research project that Martellus and I have been conducting for the last year or so. And it's about indigenous archeologists, communities, and intellectuals interpreting items from the Mesoamerican collection at the British Museum that contain written narratives. So they've been doing those interpretations on the basis of their academic knowledge, their ancestral knowledge as indigenous peoples, and I think importantly, because they're written narratives in the collections, codices and glyphic inscriptions, they've been using their indigenous languages. So this is important to me for two reasons. On the first uh, reason, 
it is very uncommon actually for indigenous led interpretations of historical collections in museums to happen. Um, but of course theirs is invaluable insight uh, because what they know in terms of their daily life and in terms of the knowledge embedded in their languages can ho hope to provide very innovative new scientific interpretations of pre-Columbian culture in general um, and in specific these three items which you'll see uh, illustrated over the next week. Um, but secondly, because of course the people who've been conducting these interpretations, our collaborators, they are the descendants of the people who made these collections in the first place. And so it's of deep ethical importance for their positions to be included. And so this event is the first joint um, project of dissemination of this ongoing research project. And so this has been an experiment in co-development. And as we understand co-development, it has been our job to not delineate the research that all our, our collaborators are doing. But instead, we've let them decide the focus and the breadth of their research. And instead, we've tried to facilitate their research. And we've turned to the curatorial process instead. And so we've been thinking about storytelling and non-Western narratives in the museum, which Laura will talk about a bit more later. And so during the past year, we've been having weekly, weekly meetings over Zoom. And so it's, it's been a completely digital process uh, to culminate in this digital event. And so all of, all of those things have been happening in this office, basically. Um, and so uh, it is important to know that I think digital has been key in two aspects. So first, we've been able to collaborate with people around the world. And so we don't not only collaborate with people through Mexico and through Guatemala, but also diaspora in the US and Europe. And secondly, and I think really importantly, is that we've been able to curate this event um, to be relevant to local communities in Mexico and Guatemala, and not only focus on British Museum's traditional audiences. And so um, I think everybody, all of our collaborators can agree that the main, I, the main uh, idea is that we want to platform a plurality of indigenous voices. And so during this week of events, you're going to have the opportunity to see um, how indigenous languages are mobilized um, to create these reinterpretations of objects in the collection. And I think really interestingly is gonna, you're gonna see how these researchers have mobilized digital technologies to not only conduct their research, but also um, in community outreach. Yeah, so just to touch on what Mateus was just saying about the ways that storytelling and narratives are woven into the museum space. Our original perspectives curatorially were precisely to create perhaps a more traditional museum project like an exhibition. We had conceived that to happen perhaps digitally. Uh, but what, what um, we were wanting to do with that is we wanted to try to include some of the culturally specific ways of understanding history and heritage and time that are again embedded in these collections. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, are part of the deep knowledge of our collaborators into the way that the exhibition would work. Because it often seems quite illogical to have a museum which contains non-Western collections from peoples whose perspectives on the world differ in terms of precisely these perspectives on history and heritage, um, but told through narratives that make more sense to sort of Western knowledge systems. Uh, and of course, you know, we, we, we were sort of excited about those prospects, but I think that's why it's particularly significant that our collaborators in the end chose not to engage with us in this sort of exhibitionary project, but insisted that it would be interesting to have an event series like this in order to platform a number of different voices from local communities in Mexico and Guatemala. And I think that that's what will be interesting for the event series this week for you. So hopefully it will galvanize your passion for items like these codices or like these uh, glyphic inscriptions. The people who will be presenting to you this week have spent dedicated their lives to understanding these collections. And it, it does demonstrate the importance of very deep knowledge and deep scientific knowledge as well as indigenous knowledge. Um, but I also think that it will show that there isn't just one position, one interpretation, however, it, however deep that knowledge is. It's all about the fact that there are very many positions, even within Indigenous communities. And I think that the sort of scope of this event will demonstrate that. And so thank you so much for participating in this event. And we really hope you enjoy uh, all the things to come in the next week.
The aim of this presentation is to commemorate the birth of the great Mishtek ruler Iyanakwa Teyusi Nyanya. That happened on the 21st of June in 1064. The Mishtek codices called in Mishtek Nyi Nyu Ana Nyu Sao are sacred books. They record the history of the different kingdoms and the ancient rulers that were present in the Mishtek region in the south of Mexico during the last six centuries of pre-colonial times. That is from about 900 to 1521. These codices consist of strips of deerskin glued together and mounted as screen fold books covered with a fine layer of stucco and painted like multicolored frescoes. They are truly the heritage, historical heritage of the Mishtak people, the nation of the rain in Mexico. They are part of the cultural memory of the contemporary indigenous communities. The sign for the Mishtak people we find in this slide of the PowerPoint, the name for the Mishteks in the Mishtek language in ancient Mishtek was New Zawi. In modern Mishtek, you have different dialectical variants, and they pronounce the term as New Zawi, New Sao, New Dawi, New Dao, and all of that uh, has the similar or same meaning, namely the land, the people, the nation of the god of rain, the rain god. New is people place, kingdom, and it is painted as a rectangular frieze with a step fret motive. And the rain god we see above it, uh, this characteristic face with rings around the eyes and long teeth represents Zawi, god rain. The interesting part of the study of Mishtek codices is that we are dealing here with a pictorial language, a writing system that is based on images, pictography. We will just mention a few items and then go right into reading of this, of scenes in the system. <clears throat> An important aspect, of course, is chronology. Dates are registered in the ancient calendar as combinations of dots that represent numbers and signs, day signs. And both the numbers and the signs have their specific names in a special calendarical language, not in common day Mishtek, but in a specific idiom for calendar notations. And another aspect is that the protagonists of the history, the ancestors, that uh, are acting in these narratives are identified by calendar names that represent the day on which the person was born. And that calendar name appears together with another more descriptive or poetic name. For example, we see below here on the left an example of a calendar date. Uh, that figure that resembles an A is the sign for year. This is a year called six read, and the day uh, is six seven. And uh, those dates recur in units of 52 years and enable us to calculate long sequences in time. And next to that, we see uh, an image of one of the protagonists of the Codex narrative, Lady Ten Flower, Cobweb Rain. We see the lady standing, the calendar name is there, and the personal name or uh, poetic name, given name, is the cobweb with the sign of the rain god in it. 
Now, many of these books and artworks have been destroyed through the years of colonization and uh, neglect after that. The Codex Tonin Deje, also known as Codex Such or Codex Natal, is one of the very few pre-colonial books that have survived. The original now in the British Museum. Uh, fortunately, we have recently got new digital photographs of excellent quality of this codex, uh, specially made by the British Museum mm. for this event. Other important Mishtek codices are in libraries in Oxford, in Vienna, in Mexico City. We will try to read a number of the scenes as an introduction to the system and also to the contents of these works. And we will do so in Mishtek, specifically in one variant, the variant of Chalcatongo, which is called Sa'in Sal. Yeah. 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 This is the song, the ceremonial speech, the ancient history, the sacred history, that we honor with tobacco. In the beginning was heaven, still in darkness and gloom. Here we see a page, the beginning or opening scene of the Codex Yutat Noo or Pindobonensis. We see heaven where everything is situated, and we see actions represented by nameless figures painted in black, and they are carrying out actions anonymously, but in a spiritual manner, because being painted black is typical of priestly functions. So we have a character speaking colorful words, and another one offering tobacco, grounded tobacco, as respect for these words. This is the opening scene. The next scene will show us the uh, fact that the world was still in darkness, but we will move on to another topic. Sukkava, Sukkava ka andil, Nikastuma, Nikanduko. Iam Yoko Doso I Akakua Nananyu I Akakua Tatanyu Nika Kunyanu Nika Tausin Nika Hai Tatajo Nika Hai Tatandu Akai Chaku Ekajo Nanyu On top of the mountain of heaven, and that is the place where you saw the opening ceremony taking place in these presentations. On top of the mountain of heaven, the divine beings manifested and established themselves. Grandmother, one dear. Grandfather, one dear. Beings of great power and authority. Ancestors who created everything that lives and exists in the world. Ma ko sau ko yosu ni kasna aja ichi nyujo anina kwa a shaulu nukana ja ini ni nyu tu i tu ana. The son of this couple was Lord Whirlwind, and he is invoked here as Ko Sao, the rain serpent or the feathered serpent. Lord Whirlwind, the feathered serpent, taught us culture, beautiful speech, songs, 
that spring from the heart. The divine books, the sacred history, the ancient history. You see here above the image representing the god of wind, the whirlwind. He is seated on a stone and he is painting a codex in black and red paint. For him, there is the ink that he is using or the paint that he is using. And the other uh, is another manifestation of the same being and songs come from his chest. John da Sequia. No, you, no, tell you, no, tum, no, nicho, ve, no, andu, nicachino, no, utilu, sama e, a jisu, kuzuchi e, no, nicacu, the nicana, e, a cosau. Many years ago, in the kingdom or the city state of Tilan Tongo, New Tno stood the temple of heaven. There people worshipped a sacred bundle, a sacred cloth that contained the holy flint from which the Lord feathered serpent had been born and come forward. I asutu ku kewi saun di kandi ninda tu unja hindu je ni chinyo unja ni utilu ni hoso ja ni soko ja ni nyuma ja ni tava ja so ja there in the temple of heaven the high priest lord five alligator rain sun communicated with the deceased ancestors and worshipped the sacred bundle, offering blood from his ear. Here we have two images showing this person, five alligator, his calendar name is there present. He has elements on his face that refer to the rain god. He is also a plumed serpent, serpent head, who speaks to the death as a skull is on top of his own head. And we see that also in the other image where he is offering blood to the sacred bundle in the temple of heaven. That is this band, blue band with star eyes on top uh, that was standing in uh, Tilang Tongo. By now we have reached the 11th century. This is a historical character. He was the father of Lord Eightier, uh, whose life is uh, central to this presentation. Ni sino ya, tiu ya, ti asau, di candi. Ni sino ya, tiu ya, ti asau, di candi. No ve en yo, andu, te vas a ni tanda aya, que i asu, si tuta, sa, secunda, ni du coja, secuteju, ni ve ani, no tu. When Lord Rain Sun finished his service in the Temple of Heaven, he married Lady Eleven Water, turquoise bird, who sat down on the throne inside the palace of Tilantong. No, 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 no. Nakwa ni kaku i anakwa ti nyanya ni stuja nuja no nyuchiu tunja ni ku kuti kuyi nya sha ni hika ni hino ku sha uni biko sau handu kani ndu nya ani kana ja ni ndi ni kana i andi kandi
in the year 12 read on the day 8 deer which corresponds to 21st of june in 1064 according to the gregorian calendar lord eight deer jaguar claw was born and showed his countenance to the world his character was that of a brave jaguar it was the 18th day of the month of rain the day of the summer solstice the longest day of the year at dawn the hour of the soaring eagle that is when the sun god rises so this is the famous lord a deer here is the year of his birth given below him his calendar name which of course is the day on which he was born in front we have the sign of the month of rain we call zawi uh, with 18 dots giving us the day in that month and therefore not leaving any doubt as where we are, we are on the 21st of June in 1064. And then we have the soaring eagle standing for the soaring or the rising sun. I anakwa tinyanya ni kuja se i a suku sao di kandi ni asu se i a tonani kuja. Nun sa in sao anika ka a i a ana a ni nani te juicy nyanya. Lord Edir had the name Ting Nyanya, that is Jaguar Claw. He was the son of the high priest Rain Sun. He was not the child of kings, not a prince of royal blood. And in the language of the ancient lords, his name was Teyusi Nyanya, the elegant form of Ting Nyanya. Nihanu ni hanu ni hanu on the suchi ni kuja chatiji ni chi jandua no nyu nyu he grew up strong and vigorous from a young age he was a brave warrior he put his arrows in the lands of many peoples that means he conquered those places Here we see him walking with throwing a dart thrower and he's throwing these arrows and hitting in this case a rock of the eagle and the day is given and here we have his calendar name eight deer and next to his hat on the other side the navel of the jaguar that is jaguar claw. I asu nyu nyu tonu nyu anute pe i anakwa ni kanda tu handendu kingojo pe eki ni akika a akika kata u no i anduji. Lady Six Monkey, the princess of the town of Khaltepec, and the warrior lord Eight Deer agreed to go together to the cave of death to request help from the deceased ancestors. I a joko ve ki ni tau tiu te ni hani ichi ni kei no i a se unu aki tanda aki un i a tonu ni te no i anakwa Haki ichi nyu ka ka ni no ija kicha ducha ducha nyu ha andu. The goddess of the cave of death gave instructions to both of them. Lady Six Monkey was to marry another person, a king of another kingdom, and Lord Adir had to go to the hot lands of the Mishtek coastal region where the ocean stretches to the horizon at the foot of heaven. 
This scene took place in 1083, and it is really the turning point in the biography of Lord A. Deer and also of Lady Six Monkey, uh, which we cannot treat here in detail, but who has quite a story of her own. Y anakua ti nyanya ni kini ichikwa de ni kuja tonuni yuku sa te wa ni haija ni saja unka ve eyu andu. Lord a dear jaguar claw went there to the coast and became king of the city state of Tututepec, known in Mishtek as yuku sa. And there he founded another temple of heaven. E i anakwa ti nyanya ni kandumani nutaa ni i atonuni ni kojo ni ndijo i a ki witsu katsalkwak. Lord Edir made an alliance with the ruler of the Toltecs, a Nahuatl-speaking people from the center of Mexico. This ruler was the king of Tula Cholula, Lord Four Jaguar Quetzalcoatl, plumed serpent. The alliance that we are seeing here takes place in 1097. Here we see a detailed uh, scene from the Codex. We see on our left Lord Four Jaguar. His name is given below his feet. He has the characteristic face painting of the Quetzalcoatl figure. He has a pimple on the nose that characterizes the historical Quetzalcoatl according to sources of Central Mexico. And to the right, we see Lord Adir, his name calendar name and his given name, the Jaguar Claw, be him, and he raises his hand with two fingers, saying, we will be together. And the place is given for the Toltec ruler, the staircase place, which is one of the signs for Cholula in the center of Mexico. Dendu ni kake ichi kwangojo beenu ja i andikandi dendu ni kaha asukendu chaka nu hi inundo mwa nukaja chaka hakandeche ko ku ko ndiku ko joso tikacha. Together, they went on a journey to the house of the sun god in the east. In canoes they crossed a great lagoon, which we can identify as the Laguna de Terminus, a place of flying fish, alligators, conchs, whirlpools that are represented as feathered serpents. This brings us to one of the most famous images from the Codex Toninderia and in fact from the Mishtek Codex literature. Uh, this very often reproduced image where we see uh, Lord A Deer in a canoe followed by Lord Four Jaguar. Their calendar names are not given here. We recognize them because of their attributes. They are, of course, armed and they follow another canoe in which Lord Eleven Water uh, guides the road to this I'm sorry, Lord Nine Water guides them to an island which they conquer. Their arrow hits the place, and the others are the days on which this all happened. In the water, we see the animals, you know, the different, uh, the crocodile or alligator, the flying fish, the conch, and the plumed serpent, and some other uh, shell. Y anakwa 
Nisa a unu yun sao. Ko tenta ja ni kaku kwasu ini. Tenta kiti ini. Nuta a hina. Te i anakwa. Ni hani. I asu inu yun. Tenendo o hinju. Hite ju ja. Ni ten ja. Chini se e. I asu inu yun. I asu chi. Ki ki chi. Ninde e. Teni kaku. Lord Adir had now unified the Mishtak region, but there were still a lot of envies and conflicts among his relatives. Lord Adir conquered the kingdom where Lady Six Monkey, the one who had accompanied him to the cave of death, was now living with her husband and her children, and he killed Lady Six Monkey, as well as her husband, as well as their two sons, as the sons of the king from an earlier marriage, I must say. And here we see him taking prisoner Lord Four Wind, who was the son of Lady Six Monkey herself. And we see him crying, but later he managed to escape. He was not killed. Here it is. Action scene, Lord, a dear, strong, robust, armed, and the younger man, Lord Four Wind, crying, tears come from his head, uh, his eyes. I anakwa ti nyanya ni tanda ahi. I as a sijo co ita Nikandu conenduja in ve ani Nika hija sua Nika ku nyanuja no nu Nika kuja i atonin no sao Lord A dear Jaguar Claw then married Lady Thirteen Serpent, Flower Serpent. They both sat in the palace and drank chocolate. They were great rulers, king and queen of the people of the rain. You see the palace structure with its, this, its mosaic on the roof. Uh, Lord Adir here to the left hand. His name is given below. There is the date and the day and above it is the name of the lady, 13 serpent. She reaches, uh, she holds a uh, Vessel with chocolate in her hands, and on her back we see the plumed serpent with flowers that represents her given name. Uh, this is 12 March 1103. Uh, Lady 13 Serpent belonged to the same dynasty of the kingdom that Lord Adir had just conquered. So she is his actually his niece, the daughter of his half sister. And with marrying her, he unifies different factions within the kingdom. Nikaku Nistu Sesuja Nisna Ajanuja no Nujiu. Minani i asu si wako sinduan sao ni hanoja ni puto aja. Their daughter was born. She showed her face to the world and received the name Lady Tenflower Cobweb Rain. She grew up and she was educated. I anakwa ni ha ahika. Teni. I anakwa ni ha ahika. Te ha ni kwa ni ndukawa hakikusu. Ju ichi yuku ni kenda uncha. Teni ha ni i anakwa. Nwa hindi i a kichi jabi. Ni hini teni ndee. Jaku juno, jaku. Jakuju Hakuro Nikei.
One night, on a journey to faraway lands, Lord Adir lay down to sleep under a blanket next to the path through the mountains. There a man sneaked towards him, stabbed him and took his life. Lord Wind, fire serpent, stood by watching the scene. This is stone and stick for you. This is your punishment, he said. We see Lord Adir here lying under a blanket. Here is the road. Somebody anonymous comes from the road, stabs him in the chest and takes out the heart. It's not like so many people always say a sacrifice scene. Nobody is sacrificed. This is a political murder. And here is someone who is much in agreement with this murder, namely Lord Four Wind, the one that had fallen into the hands of Lord Adir, but who escaped. At that time, he was a young boy crying, but now he has become more mature and he is part of this scene, raising in his hand a stick and a stone uh, expression in the stack for punishment. Kichi Jabi Nendu Nendu Janikanduko Nuju Nuteju Nujuchi Tenyaju Hina Tenyaju Nikasha Binda Binene Nunu Sau. And this is a scene of reconciliation. After the death of her father, Lady Tenflower Cockweb Rain the daughter of Aetir, married Lord Four Wind Fire Serpent. Together they sat on the mat on the throne of the town of Flints. That means they became the rulers of a kingdom of which town of Flints was the capital. capital. And the people of the Mishteka lived in peace and harmony. Vinda, Vinene, beautiful expression of a social ideal in the Mishtek culture. We see Lady Ten Flower here to our left hand side, Cobweb Rain. Seated here is the town of Flints. And on the mat and the throne is also Lord Four Wind, Fire Serpent. And here we finish this part of the story with another image that has basically the same message, but it is with more details. Here we have Lord Four Wind seated and Lady Ten Flower, Cobweb Rain, daughter of Lord Adir, and Lord Four Wind, who was so happy that Lord Adir was killed, but they reconciled. And this marriage stands for the unity. Here we see the town sign, the flint, and another place that was part of the kingdom. The, uh, we see the place of um, clearly or clear visibility, Plachyako in the Mishteka Alta region. They are speaking, the two rulers are speaking to somebody, 11 uh, Jaguar, Flame of the Mishtek, that is his personal name and they are going to give him a kingdom uh, in the area of Sakatepec, a place in the southern part of the Altai, at already beginning of the Costa, in the Mishtek region, where a different kingdom will come into existence. So with these images, we have tried to give you a very brief, not even a crash course, but just the beginning of an introduction to some scenes of a complex and dramatic narrative, which is both history and literature of the Mishtek people, an ancient heritage from pre-colonial times, which was taken away during the colonization and has remained hidden and unknown 
for many centuries. But uh, in the past 100, 120 years, a lot of work has been done and still is being done also nowadays with the participation of Mishtek researchers to clarify the contents of this beautiful heritage. Thank you all very much. Nada cuando chini da china canchi. Reciban un saludo desde la nación de los New Sabi. Para nosotros los jóvenes es muy importante conocer y transmitir los conocimientos de nuestros libros sagrados que escribieron nuestros ancestros. Hemos trabajado desde hace tiempo para poder transmitir esta información y este conocimiento a los niños. Kuichimando, kuni kaje chinya yebu chanyo oba ayu kwa nyunu nyo oba ayu kwa tutu chanu chichio taka tu saan sabi kwenya kuchinyo chikoyo ndukwa chisi tandu kwa chiyo yu kwa nyako onu kora tandu tu chanu chakiyo tandu chanyanu tutu chanu yu kwa chabi masutu mani chindo. Para nosotros los jóvenes es importante mantener viva la cultura de nuestros ancestros a través de los códices. Muchas gracias. Dida kushi kushi tando. Tutu yo kuki undo. Sana kutua anu. Sa waan sabi. Sa da kansa. Sa shita saa. Sa da kendo. Kuta kude endo. Do kona da kendo ondo. Sa jodo tutu. Kukwa shikata vida. Sana kutua anu kwachi. Nunchiko bashi. Kuta kude endo. Kota shabishi. Si we e nani. Museo Británico. Sakiya Shikanu Ichita. Sane Nyuji Nakini Kutondo. Shikuta da Bindo. San Chikonya Abashikundo. Dua a Nushibita Nakuta Kutondo. Tasha Bini. Conocer el significado de los códices de la nación Nyusabi como jóvenes nos permite darle otro significado e importancia a los sitios sagrados que están en nuestras comunidades y con ello reivindicarlos, al igual que nuestras costumbres, nuestras tradiciones, la música, la danza, las historias de nuestros abuelos y sobre todo nuestra lengua misma. Pero se necesita más apoyo para que los conocimientos que vienen plasmados en los códices puedan llegar a los niños, a los jóvenes y por qué no a nuestros abuelos. Agradezco al Museo Británico por tan importante evento que realicé este día. Muchas gracias.
Zakibinu Kividina, Sani Inin Dita Nu Saku, Nuji, Dikusu Kwaku, Sabini Bani, Nakini, Nanta and Rosaku Nuji, Kachikushi Kushitando, Quenta Gukaba Nujia, Naninu, Tuidana Sayo, Menindusa Kune Nuji. Desde el inicio y al principio de la creación, los dioses pensaron en todas las cosas buenas y bonitas para la felicidad y el disfrute del mundo. Eso dijeron los abuelos y las abuelas cuando los dioses crearon el mundo, cuando todo era oscuridad sobre la tierra y solo había limo y lama sobre el mundo. Nyanchido Tonu Bashinuji. Kwasaka no ini koni didani da nyu da tsayu nyuji a. Hane dan chido da ton i ton wa bashi sakondo kando. Kunzaganya kundo didano sawa a nyuji a. Dota stoni didanyu yuandibi. Dikusukwa sani da nuni didani vita. Entonces apareció el que trajo la palabra florida al mundo y dijo, Muchas felicidades y alégrense los corazones de todos los hombres y mujeres del mundo, porque aquí traigo la palabra florida, palabras bonitas y sagradas para hablarnos y comunicarnos, para vivir y recrearnos en este mundo, pues así lo señalaron los dioses del cielo. Niana teto un jotata tasha viñani tu ton vi ton waku na kachindo ho na chinundo na kukueto i kunzakaña akundo. Y enseguida apareció también el que da la bienvenida a la palabra, diciendo: Le damos la bienvenida con respeto y le damos las gracias por la palabra sagrada que nos trae para comunicarnos. Ñu kuna meda ku nya kunza niño kuna sanzada sashika yo sashika chodini sana cosa kashi didati tata da tu niño sako kititata niño kuna Entonces apareció allí el cuidador de la noche y dijo Yo soy el encargado de cuidar la noche Yo soy el camino de la luna y las estrellas yo vigilo el andar de los animales nocturnos, porque así señalaron los dioses de la noche. Ñu, kunza kandu, con esa kanu inindidani me da ku ñu, kunza andu, di kunza da sanakondi anitu yututata, shinidanitu italabili. Y el cuidador del día llegó y dijo, engrandezcan sus corazones, porque yo soy el cuidador del día quien les traerá calor a sus días fríos y cuidaré de las plantas que los alimentan. E hizo su aparición también el cuidador de los espíritus, diciendo... Los dioses me dijeron que cuide de los espíritus que gobiernan sobre la faz de la tierra, todo lo que hay en el aire y en el cielo, para que no haga daño a seres del mundo. Y apareció también el cuidador del espíritu subterráneo, y dijo, Yo debo cuidar del espíritu que vive debajo de la tierra, donde viven también animales y otros seres, para que tengan que comer y no sufran. El cuidador del agua. Los dioses señalaron que sea yo quien cuide de los ojos de agua, 
de los ríos, las ciénegas y manantiales, para que siempre haya en abundancia para todos. Nunchido chai, me da cu nunchido chai, cuneda sacata aquí, soñutas toni, Natasha ni daza chicanrosa. Espíritu que carga el caracol sagrado. Soy el espíritu que carga el caracol sagrado que llevará la música al oído de los dioses, para que nos escuchen y hagan caso a nuestras peticiones. El primer padre del mundo A mi esposa y a mí nos mandaron los dioses que crearon el mundo Para tratarlos con amor y respeto Que no haya discordia ni maldad sino que haya felicidad y gozo para todos, y que no exista desprecio ni rencor en sus corazones. Dina cosa guasa dijo, sanako ando kutundo ni ujia, sanako kuda ando sanakakaya chine ujia. La primera madre del mundo. Queremos que haya paz y tranquilidad para ustedes, para que nos perpetuemos y abundemos para que nuestros hijos funden más pueblos y nuestro legado siga por los tiempos venideros. Kushika nutsa ndu enika dianditu di ito dianditu uyuku dianditu kava suka ketu enya de eshietie sakisaya nada vili andida sakoya la chikusha yutu por el poder divino se retiran las aguas y así se formó el mar. Se descubrieron las peñas y se formaron las grandes montañas. Luego nace una mujer y un hombre, quienes empiezan a sembrar árboles, plantas y flores para embellecer el medio donde han de vivir y recrearse. Cuca, chi y ta cuca tastoni. Dududina no sani inia tu cuca, chi y ta cuca. Sanako kune kunchido ta de e. Tastonia, koya yuji. Sakachinda ñu. Kadandaya kuachi. Kakuta dida da ñu. Diku tastonia ta etachi. Na tastonia yuji a. Los primeros sacerdotes reciben el bastón de mando que deben portar las autoridades durante su mandato como símbolo de poder y mando. 
para así hacer justicia y poner en orden en donde haya que hacerlo. Y esta labor fue entregada principalmente al venerable y gran señor Nueve Viento. Los dioses se dirigieron al venerable y gran señor Nueve Viento para presentarse en la cima del Cerro del Cielo. Pues de ahora en adelante será su deber llevar paz y bienestar al mundo, ejerciendo la justicia y aplicando las leyes a los hombres. Con esta canuini de Dani y Oñuya, me da cosa nani ta etachi. Vada nuni, saneda enchida tu cuca y ta cuca, sanaco, tastoni, kundo yuya. Sukwa neda enchido da pashi, tashita de e, dinanu. Ora tasa, enchido da pashi, yuti a, natastoni, kundo, kundo yuji. Du akachi, sa, kiwi sandaya, sadabashi. Nueve Viento dijo, Hermanos, yo soy Nueve Viento y llevo conmigo el bastón de mando, pues los dioses me han encargado la tarea de ejercer la justicia y el orden en la tierra, para que el respeto y la igualdad siempre perduren. Eso dijeron y mandaron los dioses cuando me entregaron el bastón. Y ahora les pido a ustedes, hermanos, que acepten y reconozcan mi mando, por el bien de la humanidad. Esto que estamos observando da a entender que la autoridad tiene el mando con el bastón que les fue entregado y el pueblo tiene la vara del poder. Eso es lo que conocemos como democracia. Y que cuando la autoridad no cumple con el cargo, va sobre ellos la vara de la justicia. <risa> Cuando Nueve Viento carga el cielo con la punta de la almena hacia abajo, se dice que toda la autoridad así carga con la responsabilidad que el pueblo le ha confiado, para que busquen bienestar para todos los habitantes. Nakini no sando nza iyo ta una idu iyo ya e kabanani ayute sukwashinia e yatastoni nani inu kodo. Antes de trasladarnos al señorío de Tilantongo para conocer la historia del gran señor Ocho Venado, es necesario visitar el cerro del Añute, donde gobernó la gran guerrera Seis Mono que en algún momento estuvo ligada a la vida de este gran gobernante. Se da cuaya, zaya, zaya, nyanani, inyu, kodo, dono, ko, zakanyaya, kwa, nyu, nani, nyundeku. Sus padres fueron el señor Diez Águila, jaguar de piedra, de la dinastía de Tilantongo, y se casó con la señora Nueve Viento, blusa de pedernal, de la dinastía de Suchixtlán. Por las circunstancias que vivió su familia, ella fue destinada a ser la gobernante del señorío de sus padres, 
por lo que fue encomendada a su tutor, el señor Diez Lagartija, hacha de jade, águila con plumones, flecha y espejo ardiente, quien cuida y educa a la princesa Seis Mono, blusa de serpiente. Después la lleva a Achutla y parten al mencionado lugar. Se cua aquí, cusa, da cua ea, da cua ña eche saia, sa esa na cua caea, saia nani, iñu codo, tu cutu ea, sa, da caña ea cua, e nu, ve e i, su cua io ea, sa xinia, e ya nani, e, yuku, su cua da cua ña echa, da dando ea, xana ea. Namusa nakutuya kundaya nda ayu nani ayute. Después de un largo periodo de enseñanza, el tutor de la princesa Seis Mono va por ella. Terminada su preparación en Achutla, el tutor le dice: Debes continuar tu preparación. Ahora guía tus pasos rumbo al templo sagrado, donde gobierna la poderosísima señora Nueve Hierba. Allí habrás de purificar tu alma. Solo así estarás lista para gobernar el trono de Añute. En el año 6 caña, día 6 serpiente, el señor Ocho Venado, garra de jaguar, se presenta ante el Templo de la Muerte, donde gobierna la gran sacerdotisa Nueve Hierba, y por obra del destino coincide con Seis Mono. Ambos habían escuchado extraordinarias historias el uno del otro, y una vez que sus ojos se cruzaron, sabían que su destino era estar juntos. Dos grandes guerreros, luchando por sus pueblos, mano a mano. Pero la gran Nueve Hierba tenía otros planes para estos dos enamorados. Meni, una, idu, zada sanche wakuni, yo sabaga ni sacucha dogo, yo está induni, tas toniña esa wani con induni, vita ki vita, cachada sana con induni, duni coni de da aquí. Joven ocho venado, garra de jaguar, te veo a ti, un valiente guerrero, tan solo unos años mayor que ella. Todos sabemos que no es coincidencia sino el destino quien los ha juntado hoy, ambos representantes de sus reinos. Yo sé que juntos podrán hacer grandes cosas, pero este no es su destino. Meniku meni una idu. Kukuni en allí tastoni kutuni kundani nu. Doko en se niga kaniko ichikoni cada niño da ni tú sabes tú en yo ni de co cada niño chido a tas Tony ya es ni tú joven ocho venado garra de jaguar serás un gran guerrero un buen gobernante pero tu camino será largo y difícil harás cosas que no quieres por el bien de los otros habrá duras pruebas derramarás sangre preciosa Sameni na 
iñu kodo dono ko kukuni se e ta ushi e biko kshikan se e koni kwan se e ki koni kutuni yuji doko wa a nyeji kukuni kada ni sa wa sa sa shuni y tú seis mono blusa de serpiente serás la esposa del gran señor once viento jaguar sangriento vivirás lejos de casa dudarás muchas veces del camino que has de tomar pero debes ser valiente princesa por el bien de tu pueblo Sashinitonina iñu kodo samakada koya nduyata e idu shikaya kwaya dukuya enga nyeji koya shi sanandaya nduyata ushi e biko musa nakaya namudu kutuya nyuji Entendiendo seis mono que no podía contraer matrimonio con ocho venado, ella y los guerreros de nueve hierba parten al cerro del insecto y de la luna. Ahí, ella dirige la pelea y toma prisioneros al señor seis lagartija y luego a dos lagarto, a quienes sacrifica ante el templo de la ñute, hoy Jaltepec. Ahí puso en práctica lo aprendido. Después continuaron el viaje y llegan al lugar de varas, donde el señor Dos Flor saca su rollo de hierbas, le da limpia y le otorga la blusa guerrera, como reconocimiento a su honor y valentía. Después se reanuda el viaje para encontrarse con Once Viento y hablar de su compromiso matrimonial. Sananda enduya ta ushi etachi sadaya nada sa itu de kwa sa iyo ichika nubaza doko sasada nuni musa na kutuno neyuji. Al encontrarlo le dice, por fin estoy ante ti, amado mío, tuve percances en el camino, pero aquí estoy para cumplir mi destino. Nakubita, zatu da kiya a, dini nya inu kodo, sakibita, lundo, tastunindo, didañu ya a, natanzu, kukwananzu so. Con ansias esperé este momento, seis mono, desde ahora gobernaremos juntos estas tierras, te entrego mi alma. Dua kusa, tanda e anduya sa, kida e biko kanun se enka. Posterior a esto se casan y realizan una gran fiesta. Vita na kini ndo anse nanse itu eya kutoni shi edu tu shi nanya una idu yo ya enyu una niño no tata shi ku un dikarunchi shi tanda ya shi anani e tu shi ya yo uni sa ya eya shi nani u shi u kanda zi shi kutoni sha yo ya shu ya tu sanu tanda antu ya vuelta u shi anani Mm mm, ushi en dota, kida bili, kia en mil, 
unidiko e sakuya emil unidiko uni kakuya nani una idu Ahora conoceremos algunos pasajes de la historia del respetable estadista, gobernante, sacerdote y gran guerrero, el señor Ocho Venado, Garra de Jaguar, descendiente de Tilantongo, donde su padre, el señor Cinco Lagarto, Lluvia Sol, fue reconocido como un gran sacerdote, quien en su primer matrimonio estuvo casado con la señora Nueve Águila, Flor de Cacao, y tuvieron tres hijos, entre ellos 12 Movimiento, Jaguar Sangriento, quien jugó un papel muy importante en el acompañamiento a Ocho Venado. Posteriormente, el señor Cinco Lagarto contrajo matrimonio por segunda ocasión con la señora Once Agua, Pájaro Precioso, en el año 1061. Y para el año 1063, después de Cristo, nace el héroe de esta historia, Ocho Venado, Garra de Jaguar. Una idu, Shinduñani, Tiaya, Ushi U, Kanda, Seniña Santo, Ezequiel, Kadañuya, Ki, Iñu Ko, Kia Iñundo, Saya, Iñu Nani, Yukusa. Una vez que Ocho Venado, junto con su medio hermano, 12 Movimiento, deciden establecer su primer señorío, el día 6 Serpiente del año 6 Caña, con su distinguida comitiva, se van para Yucuzá, Cerro del Pájaro, hoy San Pedro Tututepec. Quizá yo cosa de que da yo me mi cuto ya con saquia sa una idua sin de dar en sacar tan es que cuan te yo que andira sa i sa ni a na e yo cu cu yo i en chaca en che y te cuca san roto ya en yo sa no sa na con sa ni a sa cuto ya yo igua al llegar a yo cosa con un incensario en la mano Sauman el sitio sagrado y les da la bienvenida a todos. Ocho Venado y su comitiva depositan en el altar los objetos sagrados que la señora Nueve Hierba le otorgó, como son el envoltorio sagrado, un pescado de oro, el caracol, los escudos, el bastón de mando, el bastón cosmogónico y acto seguido, Enciende el fuego nuevo y con esto establece el señorío. Nyani, kwa yukusa, kachito de nisa jaki vita, me da kukuda, nyakutu kunza akiundo, nako wando, ne nyu sabi, kutu wando didalo kiundo. Hermanos de yukusa, les hago de su conocimiento que a partir de este momento, Seré yo quien me haga cargo de este señorío. Por el bien de toda la nación New Sabi y la unificación de todos los pueblos. El día 7 serpiente del año 7 casa, el gran señor Ocho Venado Garra de Jaguar y su hermano 12 Movimiento Jaguar Sangriento 
se dirigen a Ñudnú. Al mismo tiempo, iban conquistando varios señoríos que se hallaban a su paso. Finalmente, llegan a Tilantongo y se dirigieron al Templo del Cielo caminando hacia el altar, donde depositan el envoltorio sagrado, el escudo, el bastón de mando y el caracol. Posteriormente, el señor Ocho Venado convoca a todos los señores de esta región a una asamblea para darles a conocer que toda la nación New Sabi será una sola y New Nu será el centro de mando. Ya, su cuaquida ya, ya ni tu sanchosa satan da ewa. Sanyu ewa, se shikta shana ya shiko ya. Sandu, kwa ya e sa yun se nikandutsa. Su kwa sa ya, sa ya ni e, antiga sa, tanda ya. Después de realizar la unificación territorial de New Sabi, y unir la Mixteca de la Costa con la Mixteca Alta y la Mixteca Baja. Ocho Venado disfrutaba en pasear por los senderos de los lugares más importantes para él, por lo que emprende su visita al Ñundeye, lugar cráneo, donde contrajo nupcias con la señora Seis Águila, en el sitio llamado Nutanda Ñutiyá, donde se realizó la boda con toda la ceremonia requerida para darle la validez necesaria. Ya ni canataca, ni canayuco yo, y ni ve una isu, y yo ya choco, a tandai, vina, y nai. Tiyaku, tu mani, y ni, no kusuku, y ni ve, y ni que, y nai. Ya que yo no hija, ca, a, kumani, y ni, no kusuku, y ni ve, y ni que, y nai. Yasuni Hakoi ha Kumani ini inai no wakusuku inui inibe inike inai Saeki, Shika Kwa, Ichi Yondida Tida, Jida Kunda Ete, Ete, Sakwini Kweni Sata Kumi Tachi, Uchin Chikania, Asha Nea, Ejo, Shejo Chikwa, Nzaaya, Sa Itu Ta Una Edu, Chikania, Sasa, Sashida Kwache, Sashi, Nanaya, Inu, 
hodo shi ushi e tachi suga kira sasanya ta una ido niatastone ne nyu sabi hasta que un día se fue caminando por el sendero de las aves con la idea de atrapar pájaros preciosos entre el espeso bosque que le permitieran elaborar un nuevo penacho en ese momento cuatro vientos se le acerca sigilosamente con su arco y flecha y con cuchillo en la cintura para emboscarlo en venganza de la muerte de sus padres seis mono y once viento Imaginando con esto la muerte de este gran guerrero y gobernante de la nación Ñu Sabi. Así, todos juntos bajan a Ñundeye, Ñusabi, el cementerio de la Nación de la Lluvia, actualmente comunidad de Benito Juárez en San Miguel el Grande donde los sacerdotes se encargaron de realizar el ritual con el coco, recipiente de humo de copal. Finalmente, depositan el cuerpo de ocho venado en una cueva en donde vive y reina la señora Madre Nueve Hierba, guardiana de los muertos. Por lo que se cree que el cuerpo de ocho venado, garra de jaguar, está enterrado en el territorio de San Miguel el Grande. Estos antiguos instrumentos Los que algún día sonaron en la nación de la lluvia Y que hoy casi nadie recuerda Pero así fue Así lo cuentan los libros pintados Lo cuentan así Las figurillas de piedra y de Así lo cuentan las cuevas, los cerros que en sus cuerpos guardaron los recuerdos de otros tiempos. 
luz Ellos sí recuerdan aquellas voces Ellos sí recuerdan aquellos rezos Ya se sano Ya se sano preparado desde el corazón de nuestras comunidades. Quere, queríamos presentarle al mundo el, esta cultura viva que nosotros seguimos practicando hasta estos momentos. Es para nosotros un gran compromiso la conservación de nuestros recursos bio, de, bioculturales. Y hemos venido trabajando con las comunidades de los pueblos originarios porque ellos aún conservan toda esta herencia. Tenemos mucho interés y por eso agradecemos enormemente la apertura que nos dio el Museo Británico para poder conocer la mejor forma de recuperar estos libros sagrados es que nosotros conozcamos el contenido de lo que ellos nos dicen. Es lo que nuestros abuelos escribieron para nosotros, es lo que nosotros es, necesitamos conocer porque ellos nos lo heredaron. Ellos querían que supiéramos cuán grande era su cultura y en lo que respecta a los pueblos de la lluvia, pues era una gente sumamente inteligente. Es el momento que nosotros recuperamos. Estamos en el preámbulo de la década de las lenguas como lo estableció la ONU y esta es parte de los inicios. Queremos que estén ustedes muy pendientes a lo que sigue. Nuestra meta y nuestro objetivo es recuperar nuestra lengua, porque sabemos que a través de la lengua de nuestras madres lo que heredamos es lo como vamos a recuperar también nuestra grandeza. De verdad no tenemos palabras cómo agradecer al museo y el título de este programa que estamos iniciando esta semana, que es parte de la descolonización que tenemos que realizar. 
Nosotros los mexicanos tenemos el corazón abierto para poder recuperar nuestra grandeza. Esperamos que mañana nos sigan acompañando. Eh, tenemos más de lo que es, son los pueblos de la lluvia y después seguimos el miércoles, el jueves y cerramos con la gran cultura maya el próximo viernes. No se lo pierdan, agradecemos. Pero también yo les quiero, antes de despedirme, hacer una cordial invitación. Si a ustedes les interesa conocer los pueblos donde hicimos estas grabaciones, quedamos a sus órdenes. Nosotros queremos potencializar esta ruta turística prehispánica para potencializar la economía de estos pueblos originarios. Queremos que ellos de manera sostenible aprovechen estos recursos, esta herencia que nuestros abuelos nos dejaron. Queremos que, si ustedes tienen interés al respecto, pueden acudir a la página de Face de Ecoturismo Mixteca Oaxaca. Ahí estamos a sus órdenes para darles toda la información. Y si se deciden a venir y conocer, con los brazos abiertos vamos a estar esperándolos para que conozcan de viva voz lo que las culturas milenarias sienten y cómo viven y cómo conservan estos grandes recursos. Muchas gracias y los esperamos sin falta mañana.